Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about aneurysms, the different causes, shapes, locations and also I will explain pseudoaneurysms. Let's get started. Aneurysm comes from the Greek and means dilation, which also brings us to the definition. An aneurysm is the outwards bulging of a blood vessel wall. There are different causes for that. Here I just want to mention the most important ones and explain how approximately this happens. Atherosclerosis is the formation of a plaque which narrows the lumen of a blood vessel. So then the blood has to be pushed harder through the vessel to be able to pass this narrowing. This increased pressure can damage the vessel wall. Hypertension. So an increased blood pressure over 120 to 80. To lead to an aneurysm, it usually has to be severe hypertension, which then can enlarge and also weaken the vessel wall. Marfan syndrome. This is an autosomal dominant disorder, which affects the connective tissue. In Marfan syndrome, there is a defect in the gene coding for the structure of fibrillin and elastic fibers. To be more specific, it's a defect in the fibrillin 1 gene, and this then leads to aortic aneurysms or brain aneurysms by this weakened connective tissue. Ehlers Danlos syndrome is another connective tissue disorder which also affects the strength of the vessel wall. And a bicuspid aortic valve that occurs in approximately 1 to 2 percent of the population where the aortic valve doesn't have three but only two cusps. And this leads to a change in the aortic stiffness, so the aorta becomes more stiff when there are only two cusps allowing the blood to leave the heart into the aorta. And also there's a pulsatile arterial load, which leads to hemodynamic changes, which then in turn can lead to an aneurysm. Then the next one I want to talk about is the autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD. Um, this usually leads to intracranial aneurysms. So the PKD1 and the PKD2 gene are affected in this autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. And these two genes play a role in maintaining the structure of the blood vessels. So we, when we have some kind of disorder in these uh, genes, then the structure of the blood vessel wall will be changed and um, yeah, this again leads to this outbulgings or aneurysms. Also smoking is a major risk factor because it damages the endothelial wall inside the blood vessel which then leads again to uh, damage, it can also lead to atherosclerosis and so yeah, plays different roles in the formation of aneurysms. Now I want to talk about the difference of true aneurysms and false aneurysms. A true aneurysm is one that involves all the layers of the vessel wall. So the tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia. And a false aneurysm or a pseudo aneurysm is when blood leaks out into the tissue surrounding the vessel. This can happen after a puncture wound of the blood vessel, for example by stabbing or shots, but also for example by cardiac or femoral catheterization. So it's important that after such a procedure the patient is closely observed to see if there is some kind of aneurysm formation. Now I want to talk about the different shapes aneurysms can have. I drew them also on the poster so you can compare them to the normal shape and that you have some kind of visualization. This is of course only a graphic representation so under imaging techniques this will of course look different but just to have an idea. So a secular aneurysm is of large spherical shape 
it's a out bulging on one side usually of the blood vessel. And when there's a secular cerebral aneurysm, it's also called berry aneurysm. And this is a major cause for subarachnoid hemorrhages. The next form is the fusiform aneurysm, where there is an elongated spindle-like outbulging. You can see it's on both sides of the blood vessel. This is often seen in Marfan syndrome, when in the abdominal aorta there is this outbulging on both sides. An aneurysm can also be cylindrical. It looks kind of similar to the fusiform one. It's a parallel outbulging on both sides. Then there's the serpentine or the varicose aneurysm, where there are several small spherical aneurysms adjacent to each other. And the multiloba shape, where there's one spherical aneurysm with several small bulges on the spherical one. Aneurysms can be of different locations. First of all, the kind of blood vessel is distinguished. It can be either arterial or venous, or also capillaries. The arterial aneurysm is the most common. They can also be in the heart, in the coronary arteries, or in the ventricles, in the atria and in the septa. This can be congenital or after these um, punctures or different interventions, or also um, yeah, by different disorders. Then in the aorta, it can be in the whole length, but um, mainly in the thoracic and in the abdominal aorta, they are observed. They can also be in the brain. To a high degree, or the most common one, is in the anterior cerebral artery, which is part of the circular villus, which provides the blood flow to the brain. So if there is an aneurysm which ruptures, this can lead to a stroke and to a severe hemorrhage. And also, it can happen in the internal carotid artery. Aneurysms can also be found in the legs, especially in the popliteal artery, and in the kidneys, either in the renal artery or in the parenchyma, so within the kidneys. And there are a few different locations which are especially important because of their risk of being lethal. Um, they might lead to severe bleedings, which might at first not be noticed, but can lead to death if they're not soon enough treated, or even then there can be a great risk of not being able to help the patient. So the particularly lethal locations are within the circle of willis, so within the blood supply of the brain. Then also the aortic and the thoracic aort, uh, the up yeah, so within the abdominal aorta and the thoracic aorta, because of the size of the vessel, if it ruptures, then a lot of blood can quickly lead, leak, leak out of the vessel and can lead to severe or uncontrollable damage. And also, of course, in the heart itself, for example, after myocardial infarction, this can lead to ventricular or atrial septal aneurysms. And of course, this impairs the... Uh, contractility of the heart or also um, it prevents the heart from being, being able to distend properly which of course also can be uh, lethal. So that's it for now. I hope you liked the video and that it was helpful. I would be very happy if you could subscribe.